Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We got a big show. We got two uh, special races, both of them going a mile and a quarter. Yeah, I love those classic distance races, Matt. A mile and a quarter races we're going to talk about today. But before that, let's talk a little bit about what went down on the turf last week because I, I thought there were some really nice performances on the grass and what we're going to see in the Breeders' Cup in a few months. Uh, probably uh, we'll be seeing some of these horses or many of these horses we saw last week down at Colonial Downs the day late, but uh, as good as advertised, even though it was a day late, was the Arlington Million, the Beverly D, and the Secretariat Stakes, Matt. I thought Chikari, the three-year-old for Grand Motion, was absolutely ter terrific. And I remember when he was a long shot winning that big race, the American Turf, at Churchill Downs, he's he's no longer a long shot because he keeps winning. Yeah, that's for sure. He uh, uh, certainly is the top three-year-old male uh, out there on the turf right now in our country for Graham Motion. Before that, he won the Del Belmont Derby. Yeah, he's won three out of four. Uh, uh, looks like a really nice horse. Yeah, different distances, different turf courses. Motion says he's probably headed to the Breeders' Cup mile. We'll see. Uh, terrific race in the Beverly D. The last two Canadian Horse of the Years, both females, Moira and Fev Rover, threw down in the stretch mat, and Moira got Fev Rover, uh, but it was by about an inch or two. Yeah, and that Moira's been winning big races uh, uh, during her career. Absolutely. She has a Queen's Plate winner, Matt, uh, yep. a couple years ago. Uh, Nation's Pride keeps winning big races all over the world. We shouldn't be surprised. Maybe he's not the best older horse. Maybe he's not the best Appleby horse in America, but uh, a really nice globetrotting winner of the Arlington Million. Globetrotting winner of a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Carson's Run uh, was the winner of the Saratoga Derby. A nice performance there. I had him. And uh, Carl Spackler uh, announced himself, I think, as a real Breeders' Cup mile uh, contender as well with a, a nice win in the grade one four-star day. Yeah, a horse that uh, uh, had a bunch of little problems and some bigger problems to overcome, but seems to have his act together now. And that was a, uh, a really uh, strong victory in the four-star day. Bill Murray gave me a high five in the Monmouth Park paddock one afternoon, Matt. So uh, Carl Spackler, I don't know what the connection there is. If you're a Bill Murray fan, you know. Also, we got to mention Anisette because she's been absolutely terrific on the grass as well. She came back for another win in the yellow ribbon. And I tell you what, Matt, if she's not the horse to beat for the Breeders' Cup filly and mare turf right now, I'm, I'm not sure who is. Um, well, I don't know. I'm sure there'll be some coming over from Europe that are going to be tough. Absolutely. Anisette did once come over from Europe. Hey, last week's show, if you missed it, folks, we did the Travers early preview, and it looks like the eight that we identified now are, are the likely eight. And the Travers, I, I, I don't know about you, Matt, but this is setting up as the race of the year for me as far as anticipating a, a race where every horse in the race is very good, different stories, uh, championship implications, and just a really nice looking race. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. The best, uh, the best three year old male as of date going against the best female three year old filly as of date. Yeah, you, you can say that about Doorknock and Torpedo Anna for sure, Matt, but uh, six other good males in the field too. So that Travers. We'll have a whole lot more to talk about next week. But this week, this week, let's talk about the Alabama. W when the cat is away, the mice will play. And, and that's, I guess, the theme for the Alabama, because without Torpedo in in this field, suddenly we're looking at a nice eight-horse field with uh, almost similar to the Travers, where it's hard to completely throw out anybody in this field. Yeah, I think that's true, Brian. Uh, yep, uh, uh, Thorpedo Ann is out of the way. Uh, a couple of these horses uh, have been knocking heads with Thorpedo uh, Anna at various points of this year. So uh, I think those uh, horses will find the going a good bit easier. 
Yeah, that's for sure. Let's let's uh, start from the rail out. This is going to be race 10 on Saturday at Saratoga. It's the Alabama, the uh, traditional big race for Viral Phillies at Saratoga. 600,000 grade one, and as Matt mentioned, one and a quarter miles. Number one is Intricate. Intricate, a daughter of Gunrunner, trained by Brendan Walsh, the only horse to ever finish ahead of Torpedo Anna. She did it last year as a two-year-old. This year, Matt, she's run four stakes races has, and is yet to find the winner circle. Yeah, but she's run well, Brian, in in all four of them at uh, at, var- at tracks all over the all over the country. Uh, last time in the Coaching Club American Oaks, where she was behind Torpedo Anna, but she was also behind uh, Candied, who was in this field. Absolutely intricate. Um, yeah, knocking on the door, eight to one there or so. Uh, can't throw her out. Another gun run, Philly, is Chattelis, the number two. Chattelis, uh, as I said, is a daughter of gun runner, Matt. She was a grade two winner last year, although she was kind of in and out last year. She also ran some poor races. But she returned this year uh, recently in the Indiana Oaks and was a game winner of that grade three race uh, up here near Indianapolis. Yeah, game winner uh, racing on the on the front end in that performance. Uh, she's, you know, like you mentioned, uh, a grade two winner in the chandelier at Santa Anita. She also ran well uh, on the turf. So a versatile horse and, and uh, uh, maybe has room to improve and be a win contender in this field. Yeah, you, you can't throw her out. I see Frankie DeTori up there in the saddle. Number three, let's talk about Power Squeeze, Matt. I, I think Power Squeeze has a very interesting record in 2024. This daughter of Union Rags uh, has run in six stakes races this year. She's won four of them. She's won four stakes races this year. That's uh, one of the leaders in the country for stakes wins this year. The other two races... She was uh, absolutely pounded by Torpedo Anna. So if you take Torpedo Anna away, Power Squeeze just wins stakes. That's all she does. Can yeah. she win this one? Uh, sure. I, I, I think she's got a good shot in here, Brian. Not only stakes races, but she has won two graded stakes races. She'll ship up from Monmouth Park for trainer Jorge Delgado, who is currently third in the trainer standings at, at the Jersey Shore track. Yeah, absolutely. She's coming off a, a, a nice win where she um, uh, uh, beat a, hor- uh, a talented filly last time in the Delaware Oaks and uh, kept coming to get there. It'll be interesting to see what Power Squeeze can do or what that late rally of Power Squeeze can do at 10 furlongs. Certainly a big shot in here. You might say the same about number four, just basking Matt, a daughter of Arrogate, one of two daughters of Arrogate. Uh, she broke her maiden for fun uh, three starts back. It was a mile and a quarter at Churchill Downs. This filly has absolutely no speed. She rallied to win that going away. And after losing a shorter allowance race at Churchill Downs, she moved up to the Iowa Oaks last time. And again, rallied powerfully, won going away. Now she gets her acid test, if you will, in the grade one Alabama. Yeah, that's for sure. This is going to be a much tougher field, but uh, it is really important. And I will emphasize one of the things that you said, that this horse has a win at that mile and a quarter distance. There are only two horses in the field that we can say that about. Yeah, it's kind of unusual, uh, but Churchill did some mile and a quarter races this year, and we saw it both on the male side, batten down, for instance, and the female side. And uh, you have two of them here in the Alabama, and and you're right, Matt, a mile and a quarter is a difficult distance. And uh, having proven herself at a mile and a quarter, just basking is one that uh, certainly deserves a look. America's vow will be one of the longer shots in the field, Matt. Heck, last time she won for trainer Timothy Ham at odds of 35 to 1. I thought it was a pretty good performance, though, for the daughter of Constitution at Saratoga. Yeah, I think so. And and uh, trainer Tim Ham is doing a really good job bringing horses to Saratoga and picking out spots where they can where they can be competitive. Uh, um, we'll see if he's made that uh, another wise choice putting America's vow in this uh, grade one. Yeah, I, I saw Tim Ham uh, trainee win another race at Saratoga yesterday. Uh, he's won at a lot of tracks over the years. Uh, he dominates the. Uh, uh, doings right now at Thistle Down in Ohio, 
but America's Val on paper, two for 10, hard to like her, but that allowance win at Saratoga makes me think maybe, maybe. One horse I have less concern about is number six, Miss Justify. This will be the first one we talk about from the Todd Pletcher barn, one of two that Todd will send into this Alabama. And uh, this is the other Todd, if you will, because the seven is going to be the favorite in the race, but this Todd is coming off a two race winning streak. I really like the race where she battled on the lead at Churchill Downs and then pulled away late, uh, one mile allowance at Churchill Downs. Then she came to Saratoga and was a little bit off the lead and, and rallied nicely to win the Wilton Stakes. Uh, last year's Wilton Stakes winner came back to win the Alabama. I'm not ready to compare Miss Justify to randomize just yet, but uh, Miss Justify is an interesting filly in here for me. Yeah, interesting filly who actually started her career with a different trainer at uh, Laurel Park and doing quite well uh, in those two races and then moved to the barn of Todd Pletcher for, uh, uh, the, for her 2024 campaign in which you mentioned, Brian, she's got those two nice wins, that allowance at Churchill and that stakes race uh, out of uh, the Wilson shoot in the Wilton at Saratoga. Easy for you to say, Matt, yeah. the Wilson shoot in the Wilton. All right, let's take a look at the Timeform U.S. Pace Projector right now. And, uh, and there it is. They're projecting Miss Justify, who I said battled on the lead all the way in her allowance when two starts back. They say she is the speed of the speed here. And I, I think that's an important thing in a mile and a quarter race. If you're alone on the lead, you're dangerous. I'm not sure if horses like Chattelis or possibly even the long shot from Ham, uh, America's Vow, let her alone. But if so, dangerous. Uh, you see the next horse, the Pletcher, the favored Pletcher, Candy, the number seven, kind of in mid-pack, Matt, coming off that second place finish last time behind Torpedo Anna in the Coaching Club American Oaks. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. And, and you know, we're going to uh, talk about Candied. Candied is the only grade one winner in this field. Uh, she's also the leading money winner uh, in, in, the, in this field, obviously. Nice wins. Uh, she won the grade, a grade one as a two-year-old in the Alcibiades, has come back to win. Uh, at Monmouth Park in the Lady Secret, one of our favorite horses of all time uh, uh, with that race at the Jersey Shore. And last time was second in the coaching club of American Oaks behind Thorpeda, Thorpedo Anna, but well clear of the rest of the field. Yeah, she was several lengths ahead of Intricate, who's also in this race, who was third, who rallied for third in the Coach Club American Oaks. Yeah, Candide was a second best. I mean, Torpedo Anna kind of blew the break and uh, probably had a little excuse not to win the Coaching Club American Oaks big, but she did. Uh, but Candide, Candide is the class of the race, Matt, as you, oops, I put the wrong race up there. Let me put the right race up. Candied is the class of the race. Manny Franco will be up aboard. And uh, yeah, a big win last year at Keeneland, a very good race in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Not a bad comeback race in the Grade One Ashland earlier this year. She beat older Phillies in that Lady Secret that you mentioned. Honor D. Lady was second, uh, well back to her in the Lady Secret. And then a good second in the coaching club American Oaks. I have a feeling she'll probably be a little bit lower than our five to two odds. And I think I saw the morning line had her below two to one, but uh, Candy, the horse to beat for Pletcher in this race. Neon Icon is the other long shot along with America's Vow match. She's the number eight. But again, I can't completely throw her out. Rusty Arnold uh, got her up to 10 furlongs. She won her maiden nicely at Keeneland, got her up to 10 furlongs in her second race, and she won nicely again in allowance competition. Last time's performance in the Indiana Oaks was a little disappointing. Uh, she wasn't beaten a ton, but she was fifth. Um, I have a feeling that um, uh, she might like the distance of a mile and a quarter better. And I have a feeling that that might not have been her best performance. She had a little bit of trouble early, never seemed to run. Luis Saez, possibly a live long shot in here in the Alabama. Yeah, it could be and, and will be a long shot for sure uh, in this field. And and uh, uh, 
neon icon. Yeah, uh, we talked about having that uh, 10 furlong experience and, and hers was in an allowance race. So uh, we know she can get the distance. Yeah, a mile and a quarter win is is something to consider when you're handicapped, especially when you're talking about a, a double digit horse. All right, that's the Alabama. Folks, I want to remind you, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel at Horse Racing Nation uh, on YouTube, uh, do it, please. We appreciate it. Turn on those notifications so you don't miss any episodes. Leave us a comment. Give us a thumbs up. Matt and I appreciate it. It helps out the show. Matt, without further ado, we're going to jump north of the border feels weird to call this race the king's plate yeah. for, for so many years. For as long as we've been alive, uh, it's been the queen's plate. But uh, uh, King Charles and all, so it's the king's plate now. And uh, they drew a big field. And, and Matt and I want to pay homage to uh, uh, the most prestigious race in all of Canada. Of course, it's restricted to, to horses fold in Canada. But there have been some great winners over the years, Matt. And uh, this year, I, I, I think we start with a very good horse uh his name is my boy prince you see him in the number seven hole there my boy prince should be the favorite over his stable mate those are the two clear favorites essex serpent uh being the other uh one who's two of three actually for trainer mark cassie but my boy prince was a terrific two-year-old he was the two-year-old champion in canada and, and when he came down here or came out west to uh, to Santa Anita last year, he ran a big race in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. Yeah, Brian, uh, uh, that's for sure. So, of course, the King's Plate, uh, as you mentioned, restricted to uh, horses bred in Canada, is the first leg of the uh, Canadian Triple Crown for uh, horses bred in uh, uh, above the above the border yeah and and my my boy prince uh, cassie's uh, is loaded for this race and why not he has and always uh seems to have a really good string of horses that uh, that he bases at woodbine and has done so well at that uh, toronto area track uh, in the past two-year-old champ six career wins five of them stakes races on a winning streak brian of of three stakes races in a row he won the plate trial heading into the king's plate and the the there are five horses from the plate trial in this field uh, the five of them finished uh sixth or better yeah, I think people trying to beat my boy Prince uh, on uh, Saturday at Woodbine, Matt, will be looking to um, uh, be, find a wise guy horse, find a horse who's lightly raised, find a horse who who maybe can get 10 furlongs. But he proved his class. Getting back to that Bre Breeders' Cup juvenile turf for a second, he proved his class to me when he came down, the Canadian champion, and ran a really, really game third in the Breeders' Cup juvenile turf last year. He might be even better on this uh, all weather surface at Woodbine. His last three, as you said, he's won three stakes in a row. And in fact, he romped in, in the uh, King Corey. He romped in the Queenston. And last time he only won by a little length in the play trial, nine furlongs on this track, but he blew the break there. And, and then he went wide going into the first turn. So that was one of his most impressive, impressive races yet my boy prince and me strictly one to beat but you see in the morning line there essex serpent not far behind this is the track morning line number three also a cassie essex serpent is uh getting a lot of respect on the morning line he's two for three matt the son of honor code although he has raced against my boy prince before yeah uh and uh, uh cassie i guess deciding to keep his uh some of his horses apart in preparation for the king's plate uh, uh prepped with essex serpent in the uh, grade three marine stakes and, and this one was a winner of that race with uh, more of a front running trip yeah yeah that that's interesting and, and that was an open stakes race and that was only essex serpent's third lifetime race uh, an impressive winner going five and a half furlongs uh earlier this year this spring came back in the queenston was well beaten but he was second behind uh his stable boy my boy prince and last time he ran against open company in fact the horse that ran second 
was preferred to him, uh, a not a Canadian bred, and he is doing pretty well in turf races in America, the horse that ran second in the Marine. So uh, maybe uh, Essex Serpent getting good, and that's why we see him so uh, low here on the morning line, another Cassie. I think an interesting horse we should talk about a little bit too, Matt, is the number two. I like the name, uh, Rafferu, but uh, number two, Rafferu, is, is still a maiden. Despite still being a maiden, he's third choice on the morning line. Uh, yes, Brian, and I guess that's because of his last performance when he was second in the plate trial, beating a bunch of horses in this field. Uh, so Cassie, uh, uh, so this one is a Stronach homebred, uh, um, and you know, eight to one on the morning line. Uh, yeah, he's still a maiden, but that was a nice performance last night. Yeah, that was a nice performance. Only two races. He's a son of Hardspun. As you said, uh, Adina, a Stronach, homebred. Uh, we've seen those horses uh, excel not only at a mile and a quarter, but excel in the previously called Queen's Plate, King's Plate. Uh, so Rafa Roo rallying for second, uh, going seven furlongs in his debut, and then rallying for second last time. Uh, in the play trial, a very interesting, lightly raced horse here. Of course, I said my boy Prince had trouble and still won the uh, play trial, but Rafa Roo could be moving forward and could be a horse who really does appreciate the mile and a quarter. Let's take a quick look, Matt, at the um, Timeform U.S. pace projector for this race. We, we got a gaggle of horses, of course. There's 13 of them. And uh, talking about the horses we've seen already, you see that the number seven, my boy Prince, is in a stalking position. Although he did have more speed when he beat number three, Essex Serpent, two starts back. Um, Essex Serpent, though, is the horse that they say is going to be on the lead. And they're, they're expecting a fast pace. It'll be interesting to see if anybody's good enough to rally in here. But uh, the Cassie horses, the Cassie favorites, should be prominent. Uh, but that fast pace going a mile and a quarter, if you like some horses with odds, possibly the two, Rafa Roo, who is way back early, or or maybe perhaps some others in here, the Timeform U.S. Pace Projector gives you hope to rally in the in King's Plate. Yeah. Hey, Brian, they got to get them. They, they got to get a mile and a quarter. So uh, uh, there's going to be a lot of horses that are backing up in here. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. I don't know if it'll be the class of the race backing up, but uh, it's set up. It is possibly set up for horses who could rally. Maybe Rafa Roo, maybe Midnight Mascot, maybe even a bigger long shot. Uh, the next horse I want to talk about is the four, and you see that she, I say she, the King's Plate has a great history of female winners, is also pretty close to the early pace. Caitlin, her greatness, Matt. Caitlin, her greatness is one of three from... Uh, trainer Kevin Attard and Kevin Attard, just like Mark Cassie, is uh, no stranger to winning the Queen's Plate. Caitlin, her great greatness was an American in her first four starts. She broke her maiden at Aqueduct. She ran in a stakes race last fall at Aqueduct. Um, two races at Woodbine, though, on the all weather surface have been good. She was a nice allowance winner, two starts back, and just missed last time in a big field in the Woodbine Oaks. Yep, and that was a field that was against. Uh against open company horses. You mentioned the success of Phillies. Uh, 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 one of Atard's winners was a horse that we mentioned at the beginning of the show uh, when that Philly Moira won the, the race when it was the Queen's Plate. And, and, and it's interesting to hear that in the history of this race, Brian, uh, 38 Phillies um, have won the race. Ah, uh, Phillies have done great in this race. Don't get me started about Dan Smartly, Matt. Don't don't even get me started about how good she was, of course. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think we can throw out Caitlin, her greatness. And it's interesting to see. Uh, next week, we got Torpedo Anna going a mile and a quarter against the boys and the Travers. But this week, we got Caitlin, her greatness, going a mile and a quarter against the boys in the Kings Plate. One other horse we certainly should mention is the other Cassie, the third Cassie, if you will. Uh, his name is Midnight Mascot Matt. Army Mule. Army Mule is his sire, and uh, this one hasn't had quite as much success as the other two Cassies, but he is a stakes winner, and he's coming off a pretty nice performance last time. Yeah, I think so. Maybe we have to call this one the other, other Cassie in here because it looks like this will be the longest price 
of the Cassie horses, uh, uh, has run in five stakes races. Last time was third in that Marine stakes uh, that we mentioned that Cassie uh, used as a prep race. Yeah, he, he made up some nice ground in the stretch in the Marine again, uh, against Open and Company, although the, the winner, of course, was uh, the other Cassie, Essex, Essex Serpent, uh, was the winner of the race. But Midnight Mascot, if you're looking to play against the favorites, maybe it'll come from Cassie's own stable, Cassie's own barn here with Midnight Mascot, another interesting horse. Kamura is headed to Southern California as uh, he's been one of the top riders in Canada for years. So uh, maybe he uh, wins the King's Plate before he heads west to Southern California. All right, Matt, uh, that's our look. Uh, there, there's a whole gaggle, I guess I'll use that word again, gaggle of other horses in here who look like deserving long shots. I think we covered the horses we think most likely to bigger run a big race in the King's Plate on Saturday, million dollars a mile and a quarter of course, at Woodbine. Matt, we did the Alabama. We did the King's Plate. I'm going to let you go first Can uh, when we're talking top picks here. Can I get your pick in the Alabama first, ladies first? Okay, Alabama. I am going to go with the favorite in there. I think Candy uh, maybe has a little bit of a class edge. I think Candy is really going to be happy that Torpedo Anna is not in the gate. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'll agree with that. Uh, no Torpedo Anna in here makes the Alabama more of a wide open race. And, and I said it, Candid is the class of the race. I could easily see Candid winning this. But I want to try to beat her as the favorite in here. And I really like her stable mate. I, I think Miss Justify, you saw in the time form US Pace Projector, Miss Justify should get a nice trip early and Miss Justify, uh, Justifies, I've seen them, especially over in Europe, Justifies are running a distance. Justify, I think, will be a sire who can, uh, his horses can do anything. So I'm not scared of the 10 furlongs. I'm not scared of her jumping up. She's got a win over the track, a nice win over the track. I think Miss Justify is moving up into becoming a very nice filly. The other Pletcher will be my pick in the Alabama. In the King's Plate, Matt, I, I think we kind of reversed roles. Yeah, I think so, Brian. Uh, for me, I'm going to take a shot in uh, King's Plate. It's a big field. It They're going a mile and a quarter. Just about anything can happen in there. I know uh, uh, the, the favorite My Boy Prince has such a strong resume, but I'm going to take a shot with the other, other Cassie. I want a horse that's going to come off the pace in this 10 furlong race, and I'm picking Midnight Mascot. Yeah, I don't blame you for doing that, Matt. I, I just feel like my boy Prince um, stands above this field. Uh, I loved his Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf, as I mentioned. I loved his play trial. I love the way he's running this year as a three-year-old. Uh, in that play trial, blew the break, went wide going into the first turn, and he was still much the best in the play trial. I, I think he's going to get it done here in the king's play all right that's our show matt can i get a parting shot from you my good friend by the way i'll be seeing you out in saratoga this time next week brian i can't think of anything that i'm more excited about this summer than uh than that we've seen each other every week doing horse center but we have not seen each other in person for a long long time and what a better place to do it then at Saratoga. Ah, I'm looking forward to it too, my friend. And it's going to be a great weekend of racing. Uh, the personal ensign on Friday, uh, randomized and uh, and uh, idiomatic, of course, leading the way in that one. And then the great day of racing, all those other big stakes besides the Travers, which I'm calling the race of the year. So I'll be thrilled to be out there with you. As, as always, folks, we're thrilled for you watching each and every week. If you haven't seen our Travers early preview from last week, check that out as well. We'll be talking Travers and much more next week. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphics, our friend at the home office here in Louisville, Kentucky. Derby Warps, our sponsor, the best contest site out there. And of course, Timeform US for the pace projections we use every week. But for now, we're gonna say goodbye. Next week, we talk about Travers. But in the meantime, good luck. Let's hit the Alabama. Let's hit the Kings Plate. We'll see you next week right here.